Hello everybody, welcome to CCL Season 54, first round matchup between Hancock and his Necro and Rick and his four game Goblin team. Um, did this live with Elliot actually, Elliot gave Rick a 25% chance at the start, I gave him a 13.2% chance at the start. Um, he's up against it, right? Uh, it's f Funny enough, right, this Necro team isn't that good but it's very TV efficient, yet still Rick has got Morg and Ripper and two bribes. So like, because Rick has just basically got a starting team with uh, two guards and a sidestep. So, um, yeah. And now this was a this was a mistake by Hancock. He had this really good idea actually, because uh, so Rick had set up like this so that he could bomb and not uh, not turn over and fumble as as much. Um, Hancock had this idea to chain this guy into Morg, and then push this guy back and then the wolf could hit into the fleshy so you'd had two two dice at morgue with pile on right claw palm but if you that's your plan you start the wolf here right one two three four five six seven eight you start the wolf here if that's your plan starting you there was a misjudgment but it was actually a great idea actually great idea but um yeah just flawed execution and uh, he wants the gfi <laughs> <laughs> he double ones the GFI and gets stunned. <laughs> so already Hancock's drive is in tatters. And you know, he still could have just, like, say, moved this white over here as the first move in case of that, right? So even even though that was horrendously unlucky, this white could have at least been on the ball, um, looking back. But yeah, that was just... It was actually a great idea, but, but very poor execution. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, but yeah. That, so thinking about it, I, I did put Rick as a massive underdog. But thinking about it, actually, the strength of this necromantic team is the TV efficiency. Um, you know, bonds one wolf is bare bonds with his claw palm. Block guard, bludge guard, just guard there. Bludge guard, mighty, like just wrestle there. Put guard there, like it's it's really really TV efficient. Uh, but when you're giving away a Morgan Ripper anyway, oh tragic pickup fail and catch fails as well. Like that was that kind of deserved to get the ball there. I think Rick after that balls up. Um, so yeah, obviously Rick wants to try and like mark out the fleshies one on one, right? If he can if he can land one of his rubbish trolls on a on a fleshy. The, the fleshy is so much better than the troll. That's a really good trade. But, and, you know, Hancock's got loads and loads of trade. So he might be able to hit them. And he might be able to hit even Ripper and Morg. And uh, when the Fnatic comes on, he might be able to hit that. Rick is a little bit low on numbers here. Although he doesn't look it, he does have... He's got two bribes. But he does have um, three secret weapons, right? He's got the sword and the Fnatic. Bomb. So he's got, a, he's got a lot of secret weapons. Wow. Instant. AV breath. This seems really loud. I don't know why this seems so loud to me. So that's actually a great. That was actually a great trade for Hancock, wasn't it? Um, a bludger stuck on his own, and more. He's actually totally fine. He got his heal. A zombie would be good as well. So that was a oh god, right? That was a really unlucky bonehead there, because if he'd made that block. This goblin could have come through. This goblin has just moved. Or this one could have come through. One, two, three, four, five, six, GFI. And then he would have got 2D on the ball. Because that's failed, he's had to uh, clear this and then bomb here. It was also, now is a slight mistake from Rick. Um, as Elliot loved pointing out. This was a four square pass to get adjacent to the goblin, uh, the ghoul. What he could have done was he could have done a six square pass trying to get adjacent here. And then that would have cut out the intercept chance from the white. 
which as it happened, <laughs> intercepted. Throws it back. <laughs> and uh, doesn't knock anyone over, unbelievably. And just a bit. And probably should have done that first, eh? I think it was worth trying to get rid of the wolf there. Obviously with two bribes, even though he's got secret weapons, there's no way Hancock's going to be piling on unless it's a high-value target or quite safe. Like, claw pumping more first turn would have been amazing. It's going to be hard, like, it's going to be hard mentally for Hancock to come back from that. And by the same token, fantastic for Rick. Knowing that he uh, got away with one of the... Wow, 1D, big 1D. So it's a nice... Uh, it's a nice screen here, ish, but um, very disconnected with the rest of his team. Very disconnected. Ripper. Is he chain out? Very sensible ripper. Ooh, that's interesting. Ah, so this is going to throw the bomb. Also, the bombardier could have come back to there, right? The bomb could have gone three, four, five, six to here, and then he'd be activating both trolls next turn. But then I guess he'd get based by a uh, flesh of potential as well. Dodge doing its work. Goes for the pass. <laughs> knocks over Morg, but knocks over two players. And unfortunately, in Blood Bowl 2, that's a turnover. In Blood Bowl, uh, well, not Blood Bowl 3, because they don't have goblins or bombs. But on Fumble or Blood Bowl Tabletop, um, that wouldn't be a turnover. So this goblin would have been free to get the ball. And, uh, you know, I don't know, just get sacked the next turn. But he would have got the ball. <laughs> Yeah, not much of a team split there from Nick, unfortunately, but it wasn't easy. Was it? Nice tag on that back, fleshy. Maybe this back fleshy needed to blitz to move up the field a bit. I can understand blitzing this goblin. But maybe he needed to just block that goblin with that wolf and then uh, get this fleshy free. But then we can just keep re re pissed next turn. Anyway, wouldn't it? So, yeah. Still a lot of trouble for Hancock, right? He's running out of players a lot. Um, probably not to score next turn. Probably has to score next turn. I mean, that's okay, isn't it? Gets rid of the bombardier. Oh, it might not, but it uses a bribe or gets rid of the bombardier. Maybe too. And makes Rick put his uh, field his secret weapons. Boom. I want to do a 6 plus bomb here, but. It does make more sense to just run him down and uh, maybe for next turn. I think I would have prioritised the bomb actually. Rather than uh, that one. So yeah, I think I think score's the right the right move here. Because going back doesn't even really stabilise that much. Like scoring early against goblins is okay, isn't it? Because goblins are shit. <laughs> to 
put it mildly. See, I, quite, I kind of liked this at the time, the running back. It takes a GFI. I thought it was kind of fine, but yeah, looking back, I just think the score was the play. Because he's, he's run into a... Uh, He's run into quick pass range here, hasn't he, the bomb? So he's got a plus one, minus one for the uh, tackle zone, and minus one for being stunted. So on a three plus, it's inaccurate. Which is all he needs. And he gets it. <laughs> and now it's Morg Ball. Morg is free. I, I came up with the idea here, which I quite liked, of the Ripper Blitz. And then, uh... And then, like, Ripper just stays here, like, and holds this area. But, I'm not sure which is better. The Morg Blitz or the Ripper Blitz. Because, like, obviously Morg might fail a pickup, and I just feel like having another Strength 6 in there first. And obviously if you want in 27, it's pretty terrible. Whoa. What's the pickup? I wonder if you had to go one away to get away from the fleshy A with the car. And Rook could have gone there. could have gone there anyway, right? He could have gone one, two, three. Yeah, I really, did, I really did prefer the Ripper, the Ripper Blitz. But now, I mean, now Hancock's in real trouble, right? Now it's now it's less about trying to score on his turn here and more stop getting turned over and scored on. It's the 2D, thanks to... Guard go. Yeah, this was a good turn from Hancock, for sure. Oh, that wasn't good though. <laughs> should have, uh, should have, shouldn't have won in nine there. That was a really poor decision. But yeah, this is actually really, really good uh, formation for Hancock. Very well done. I think Rick could have thrown this goblin this turn, and just to like you know get him downfield and try and do something with him. I quite really quite like this lobbing that goblin like over here. Obviously, you don't want to knock over Morg or anything, but uh, I did think that maybe just throw the goblin see what happens. Oof, that's a rough. That's a really rough one in 81, isn't it? The one in 9 was rough, the one in 81 was brutal, but Rick had stood up Ripper. We, we reasoned this was going to be Ripper's Blitz, but, like, blitzing a blodge firm, like, if he wasn't stand firm, then at least blitzing him, you know, moves him in and gets you on 3, but he's blodge firm, right? Just, uh, just don't blitz that, just stand up that, so you've at least got something there. And, uh, because he doesn't stand him up, it means that Hancock all of a sudden has a slightest chance here, He's got a scoring threat, and he's got a guard there. He doesn't have a recovery, but he does have 2D on the ball. Gets him over down. Tries the one and gets it. Disgusterous. But yeah, Rick's got to think about getting a scoring threat, right? I would have done this guy first, just to get him downfield with scoring. Oh, no, no, I wouldn't. Oh, so this is the play. For Rick, this is the play here. Um, you maybe try to punch with this troll. It's uh, it's uh, just preference. Like, I personally would probably block with a troll. Um, but whether you do or not, this guy blitzes this lino. And then... Even on a push, it clears the tackle zone, right? And uh, hopefully you pow him. And then if you pow him, you've just got to pick up the ball, go there, hand off, and he's away. 
So I think that was, but Rick played more conservatively. Rick played more conservatively than both Elliot and myself, unbelievably. Unbelievably, two of the most conservative coaches there are. And Rick reckless, and Rick chose the like, the safe, don't get beat play. While we would have tried the uh, go for the win thing. But now we just put some in range. Which is fine, like that is fine as well, like just getting someone in range. And that was my initial reaction, was just get someone in range, but then it seemed like going for the score was just too good, to be honest. Because he's like he's away, right? Pretty well away. Not 100% away, maybe that's it, like maybe he's just going to get hit by a Y. Whereas this encourages Hancock to go for the score and not hit your scoring threat. <laughs> Nobody can flip and catch it. And it ends up perfect for Hancock. Unbelievably, like, perfect scatter. No tackle zones. Dodge double GFI to make a pass. An inaccurate pass. Flip me. I mean, how unbelievable was that? It was so close. That was so close to just rolling all of the dice. <laughs> so, yeah, just punch with Morg. Maybe he's punch with Ripper as well. And then try for some ludicrous bomb bomb attempt. Ah, oh, maybe you should have blitzed with Ripper first, right? If you could have got a 3D with Ripper. Maybe even like dodge the bombardier, right? Because you're losing him anyway, so just dodge the bombardier out and then try a 3D blitz with Ripper. Oof, brutal chaos, brutal chaos. And hello, good Johnny, hello, BB Jock. This is the second time, but I mean, I really enjoyed it the first time, just having a laugh with Eliod. So there you go, that's gone about as well as it possibly could have gone for Rick, isn't it? Defends the score. Um, just two send-offs, no, no, like, you know, still got full 11. And Hancock is down to 10. Missing a Garda and the, you know, arguably the better wolf for this matchup, right? Because the mighty ball and the piling on aren't getting used that much. Because the sidestep is really good defensively. Like, Bludge is already tough for uh, goblins to deal with. I mean, this is and this is quite a strong team now, though. <laughs> you have two strength five, two strength six, and a strength seven from the fanatic. Unbelievable. It's interesting. This we talked about this. I would have split the LOS against the fanatic, but then, as Elliot said, you know, at least if the fanatic hits you, he's not hitting you with my ebo, and the others would have been like three dices with one or one with block. And uh, all with Mighty Blow, so like you kind of are losing out on Mighty Blow hits by going with the Fnatic first. And you could just have taken all the Mighty Blow hits and then try and run over them with the Fnatic. <laughs> which is interesting, I'm not sure which is better. With the Quick Snap, we could have maybe tried to uh, like chain Morg into a Fleshy or something, but. Oh, it gets two lockdowns. <laughs> You described this as quite a strong team, Jimmy. It's it's the goblins' dream, this, isn't it? I mean, there's still the tackle wolf, but uh, you've got your two beautiful stars. What's to worry about? Hello, PC. Hello, sir. Just that wall of strength just bearing down on this team. <laughs> it's unbelievable, isn't it? Two strength force just going. What have you got? What have you got? The pogo. I mean, I I often don't start with a pogo because it's it's a lot of money, 30k, just for basically one step of movement. Um, 
and 2020 particularly, you can get that move on a goblin if you so wish. But of course, you can get it on a pogo, making it move eight very quickly. It doesn't really need anything else. It can just save straight for that. The trolls we discussed this a little bit, didn't we? They're great trolls, but how much more change could he got out of this with some block trolls in there doing some hitting alongside Ripper and more? But my goodness, what a lineup! Well, funnily enough, if he had block on both of the trolls, he wouldn't have got the two bribes. Yes, very true. So, it's yeah, it's it's always the conundrum. I mean, the goblins do build very well. Well, they don't at all in the 2020 rules. But if they, if they build well, they build well incredibly lean. And able to take advantage of the bribes and some good star inducements. And then just get up in your face. And Rick's very, very good at that style. However, he does still have to drive home past some much more mobile, stronger, bigger sort of line people. And of course, all the big ones aren't, aren't that mobile. Yep. So, lot still to do. Yep. Elliot and I had loads of ideas how to play this turn, but um, Rick went with the blitz into the saw. <laughs> we want we wanted to saw this wolf basically. We wanted like a yeah. We wanted fanatic first to see if you can get rid of that uh, zombie, and if you do, then Morg blitz the ghoul and foul the <laughs> foul the wolf. Well, I like the wolf foul. I mean, that's always a nice thing to think about trying to get into any turn. Um, I, I love sawing that ghoul as well. That's what saws are born for. Um, the advantage of bringing the saw in is, unless you kick back, which obviously is a problem, even if you don't break armor, you still had a goblin there that could push the ghoul up onto the troll, couldn't you? So yes. you still had ways to get it away from the ball. Um, so I quite like that, but it's... One thing I have learned about goblins, if there's anything, Jim, and it, it may only be one thing, is that people play them entirely differently and get success. So that tells me that there's a variety of options. I mean, Elliot plays without any toys. Yudlugger plays incredibly foul heavy. I mean, even I get reasonable results and I'm sort of halfway in between. I like some of the toys, but I, I do some fouling, but I'm certainly not one end or the other of that, that spectrum. Mm. And Rick the same, you know, he can be a very foul heavy, but he can be very positional as well with them. So there's all sorts of ways of getting it done with goblins. Yeah, Rick really played this super conservatively. He did. Un unbelievable, really. Like when you when you think Elliot and I were commentating and <laughs> and we were like advocating for all the crazy players, and Rick was just doing all of the safe ones. <laughs> well, I mean, here unfortunately he did overextend his ball and chain. He did, yeah. So without anything around it, it's going to get taken down. Even if it means a two die uphill, people are going to have a go at it to try and get it off the pitch, and that worked very well. Yeah. Um, it should have gone backwards on its last spin, really, back towards more. Yeah, but the problem is, even if it does go, like it was a geophyte to go back, right? And then it's yeah. like, even if it does, it probably still gets taken. Yeah, absolutely. There's enough guard in there to still do that same move, but just to pull a bit more onto the monsters. At some point, you just got to let them go. Then they're not going to last forever. <laughs> and it got him a lot of space up here, didn't it? Putting that hole in to make that hit. It has. It's, it's nice great at drawing in that. And of course, Ripper, not very reliable in the hitting. He is, but I mean, he's not as reliable as you'd like. But very reliable for moving. Mm. So he's fantastic for this sort of moving strength six roadblock. Uh, and of course, for activating other trolls, he's very useful, as is Mork. Yes, the cleverest troll, isn't he, Ripper? Mm. Oof. Glorious Rondo Cast. And now, now Hancock's really struggling. He's got like eight players on the field or something. Yeah. And he's still got some nice ones for hitting goblins. And it still remains true. You to isolate the big guys and hit the goblins. But he also needs to yeah, prioritise getting away from some of these things and, and hoping that his flesh columns can hold some of them up. Mm. Now, he's in a good position for that. There's two on two. You leave the flesh columns behind. Everything else should retreat. Wingman, any time. Wow. Lovely. Bix, coming live from Machu Picchu. Thank you very much for the glorious raid. <laughs> this does this does look very familiar, Matt. Yep. Yep. Um, but maybe not for some. Have you seen this match, uh, PC? I saw a fair amount of it, but not all. You know, I guess some of the YouTube. I, I was things. in and out, in and out doing some other stuff. Yes, and the YouTube legions won't have seen this. Mm. Yes, 
Now here I'm not so sure. I kind of think down numbers here. You have to get up in the goblin's face and try and look for fails. And I'm not sure we've pulled enough back. And it was a really, it was a really costly uh, dodge fail. Yeah. Wasn't it? So and I, this I, guy I exposed all the switch back to the center, which Rick has gone for the switch back to the center. Yeah, I wouldn't have dodged him at all. I think holding Morg and a troll up behind two flesh columns is plenty of good work for two flesh columns to do. So I think you've opened up the whole centre there. You've exposed one of your good pieces. You've allowed Morg the freedom of the pitch in a minute. This is it's... a big move here. Look at this one. He goes there. Could have gone forward and hold, hold the, held the sideline, right? But I imagine what Rick did... Which, you know, is just think, oh, if I go here, I'll get surfed. I'll move so I don't get surfed. You know, move him away from the sideline to not get surfed. Whereas, actually, he could have gone forward, still held the sideline, and still not yeah. be surfable. So, th this was definitely the right square. And this has um, let the wolf come around the back if Frank wants. I mean, if the troll stupid's on the blitz, it's it's less good. But, yeah, I mean, particularly with the downed goblin, you can still hold that flank. And retreat at the same time. It's It's fine. But this is definitely less good. There's roots around it, particularly for a fast wolf. Yeah, I, I really like doing the uh, the double dodge, double GFI 2D hit. But then, you know, then all of a sudden, you, it's a lot of dice to roll, and you've got your wolf and your ghoul behind got the wolf. Got to, got to. But, Jim, you're behind the, the, yeah, the, you're behind the eight ball here. You haven't scored on your drive. <laughs> um, the goblins have plenty of strength bearing down on you and enough numbers behind it to make you think at some point they're going to get a, a nice screen around one side or the other. You've got to come for the ball if you've got the chance. Yeah. I'm... You know, these are the big leagues. I wanted to, but I, I can understand no. wanting to. <laughs> what's, what's this achieving? At best, it's a one in nine. More than likely, he clears it off. Yeah. And he's still got plenty of time to get forwards. I think this is weak. Sorry. I love Hancock, but I think this is poor. This is pretty greedy from Rick here, pushing him into the saw. <laughs> yeah, this that is a bit, because the problem is if, it, if the saw now doesn't break armour, but doesn't kick back, you're hitting with the ball carrier to move it, and that's terrible. But there is at least still a fallback plan. Yeah, yeah it's, it's funny because... My initial reaction on Rick, like last turn, was to just go through this zombie and, and like get through. But then, you know, if you do that, you're not going to stall out the half, are you? Whereas now, yep. obviously, Rick's thinking he can get the stall on here. Yeah, he oh, he absolutely can. I mean, the problem with goblins is you're only ever two goblins away from a, a, a removals away from a big problem, and you can do one of those yourself, and then instantly see the opponent do the, the second. Mm. So this just does turn bleak very quickly because then you're struggling to activate your trolls. And then you're looking to the two big guys that can move to both do your hitting and your positioning and your troll activations, and suddenly it's a big problem. Yep. You know, the saw goes incredibly quick, for example, and you know, blow on that and it's disappearing. Yeah, to be so, fair, Rick's done a good job of keeping the saw out of the air. He really, really has. Whilst keeping everything else busy, the saw's been useful and yet not at risk. Um, so I don't mind pulling back, but you've got to be prepared to go for it when you've got the chance, because you can just gobble it up at any moment. Oh, this is uh, all of a sudden. This is a pretty good spot for it, isn't it? He's got two options. He can uh, he can either try and bang down this flank yeah, or it, bang it's, down this flank. They're both. It's lovely. Open. I mean, the the pressure Hancock caused in a you know, inverted commas has led to his major hitting piece, the wolf, not being you know available. But instead, he stays where he is and gambles on the saw foul. I know. It's, it's very Rick, isn't it? <laughs> it's very Rick, yeah. <laughs> but if you remove the wolf, you know, it's probably game over. I mean, I'd have taken the space, you know me, Jim. I might have left the chainsaw behind to do the foul as well, but I'd have taken the space. I'd have been up that right flank like a rat up a drain pipe. <laughs> yeah. And now he's only got two turns, Rick, but I mean, he is just in range. Isn't he? Well, they don't call him Rick Careful. They don't, but he has played very carefully, uh, mostly, but yeah, just a couple of couple of saw hits. And I mean, to be fair, they've been saw hits on the wolf, so like, that yeah. is fair enough. Like, yeah. That's a hell of a... And play, right? again, leaving it stunned behind, ready to go next turn from an, a slightly stronger base to launch forwards from is, you know, is a better result. Yeah. It has worked out better, but there was some risk in getting to this state. Yeah. And even now, you're probably morgue hitting that to try and clear them both in a single hit. Rip a hit, yeah, yeah. 
Ripper. Yeah, Ripper, sorry, yeah. That is the player, but if you do this side, it's funny because again when I was doing this live, I thought this side was looked really open and I wanted to go down this side. But actually the other side looks pretty open as well, doesn't it? Like crossing yeah. over there, so it's Yes, because with the stunned wolf and the best other two pieces pulled in for ball contact, there's there's nothing left. Nothing that you couldn't either, you know, sit on or, or screen off. It's the one ghoul in the backfield is your is your hope here, isn't it? Yeah, that's again a very ballsy use of the chainsaw. He doesn't mind a risk, does Rick, does he? He sure doesn't. And now this looks kind of amazing, right? He's got the diagonal run up. He doesn't I want to make it I want to make it very clear by ballsy, I do just mean um, brave. Uh, anyone is capable of having balls in that particular set. <laughs> uh, yeah. And much love to anyone who feels they have balls of that nature. Uh, I absolutely support that you do whatever your gender. <laughs> Brilliant. So yeah, now like, may maybe Hancock had to go for the dive here. Like, as stupid as it is, yeah, dodging again, for a wandy, it, that's how desperate it is. Again, what's he hoping for here? Mm. This is no, pretty best. getting the blood firm in, but it fails the GFI. <laughs> yeah, if it got in, but it's still a 4-2-2. Um, which is, you know, there's a decent chance of getting there. It's good that he did do that on top of the ball contact. But you're looking at creating a 1-9? in nine Yeah. With maybe a 2-plus? Isn't it? Better odds to dodge in and hit? Yeah, it's gotta be. It's gotta be. Here we go. Just a GFI to almost certainly win it. Yep. Unbelievable. Unbelievable, I mean. There we go. What a performance from Rick. Incredible, yeah, incredible. We joked, we joked a lot about uh, Hancock throwing for half of the prize money for, for doing the best. Mistakes, <laughs> but, uh, that was just, just fantastic. I, I don't think so. Hancock had an absolutely beautiful team um, and still has. You know, it, the riot really is his best shot, isn't it? I know the Wolves can one turn, but it's it's not a naturally easy position for a necromantic team to take on. Mm. They well, just the funny don't thing have... is, it's, it's not that great a necromantic team, right? But it's just... No. TV. It's super TV efficient, but then that advantage that it had over a really good necromantic team was lost by playing this like thousand TV goblin team, right? So like yeah, absolutely. But for its TV, it was an amazing team. Yeah, it really was beautifully built, lovely record, some lovely pieces. Not to be gobbled away by the master dice roller himself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There is a chance here, like, uh, you know, obviously two strength six and a sidestepper on the LOS is pretty good, but you can still yeah. get the hits in. Yeah. Mm. It's just the problem is dodging through the back line. It's, but dodging through the back line, as I said, Necro just not naturally built for this, unfortunately. Yeah, no, I, I said, I said, all draw, this is like pretty much the optimal goblin team, right? Just guard on the guard on the uh, trolls, and like nothing else is is pretty flipping optimal. And then obviously you could you could argue having like a movement eight, edge four, sprint sure feet I, goblin would be pretty good. But um, <laughs> yeah, I, I've never gotten that change off the trolls. I know it's changing them, but if I could pick a single skill, it would either be block or pro, uh, rather than guard. I mean, what are you guarding? You know, even if you. If they get into your cage, you're guarding a strength two to turn into strength three, maybe. I mean, woo. Well, you, you're turning Ripper and Morgan into three Ds, aren't you? And, yeah, I mean that's largely what you're doing with them. Yeah. Protecting your um, what's it called, fanatic. But that's done just by being next to them. Yeah. I suppose the guard. I suppose the guard does add that. Yeah, he gets the pushes there, uh, Hancock. I mean, don't get me wrong, guards are great skill on anything, but it's just not quite as good on trolls as it is on lots of other things. Yeah, it's just for the TV was the thing, really, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's super lead, so you can get all the nice toys. Yeah, and so he nearly, he nearly caught it. It just feels a catch, but uh, it's yep. going to be really hard to... And he, even then, it's a 5-4-3 to get through, which is it's not impossible, but it's tricky, demanding. What a performance from Rick. Uh, what a choke by Hancock. <laughs> wow. Brutality from PC. Uh, I'm, so, I'm sorry, Jim. I mean, he played. He played fine. He played well, but he's capable of better than that. And he should have known, particularly in the second half, having not completed his drive, that a higher risk, more aggressive style was needed. Yeah. And he had a couple of moments where those shots were available. He didn't take them. And for a coach of Hancock's, I think incredible skill. I think he's an incredibly good coach. I think that's a performance that is 
not at his peak. Yeah, he does. He does. He does tend to play super conservative, doesn't he? And, and yeah, maybe that's a, a a bit of a leak in his game. The the switch up that uh, that he, he yeah he had to do in that. As much as you think like you know your favourites, right? Your your necro yeah. against goblins, you are favourites. Yeah. But uh, there was a point where he wasn't favourite. And you've got to start <laughs> playing the game state. Yeah, yeah. Before it happens as well, right? You've got to recognise how desperate it's yeah. going to be, not just how totally. desperate it is. Often when it's desperate, it's too late then to change it. Yep. Yep, so, the, change, um, the, the gear change didn't seem to happen to me. Now, I, I hate to say that, I love Hancock, I think he's a lovely, lovely guy. Um, and it's it's painful, I wish he'd played it slightly better, and I wish I wasn't so brutally honest. <laughs> no, it's not painful at all, is it? It's fair enough, like, I'm sure he'll appreciate it, and that's it, you know, it's... Uh... It is what it is. It's better than just saying, "Oh, you're the most unluckiest player in the world." <laughs> it's <isn't> yeah. It? <laughs> I mean, I mean, so that was unluck. Okay, well, bad luck happens. What are you doing about it? Yeah, yeah. And, and that was a. It was a great idea that he had with the uh, setting up the claw palm hit on turn one. It was an amazing idea, like way better idea than I would have had. But yep. then, if I had had that idea, I would have definitely made me not make two GFIs to do it. <laughs> <laughs> some so, some you know, really good plays, thing, some good yeah. creative. He's got a great mind. He could be the next big thing. Ha ha ha! But yes, he's got that sort of level of talent. Mm. Um, he's an excellent, excellent coach. So I expected slightly more in that second half. Sorry. There you go. So there you go. On that bombshell. Um, thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Thank you, PC, and Pleasure. stay fantastic.